Hey guys, Matt DeQuinney here from Beyond Grappling. In this DVD download, I'm going to show you five key concepts that will help you understand the gripping game, help you outsmart your opponents, and help you to be able to throw more people uh, in training and in competition. These concepts I wish I knew at a really, really young age because they help you so much, whether it's in training, uh, in national competitions, or international competitions. So good luck, have fun. And um, yeah, just try to start applying these key concepts to your judo and I guarantee you'll throw more people and start winning more matches almost straight away. Alright, so a left on right scenario, okay? A left on right causes a lot of problems, usually for the righty more than the lefty, alright? So what we're going to do is I'm right handed, Tillon is left handed. Now the rule number one with left and right is um, one you've got to be inside on the uh, on the col on the lapel. You really want to be inside, unless you're super super strong, where you can come around the back and crush them to death. Otherwise, you want to be inside. So more often than not, when you're fighting a, a, a lefty or a righty, if you're a lefty, you want to control inside. So what I like to do personally, I grab low on the on the uh, lapel and I pull it out this way and then I walk that way and I get a grip and look he's almost square gives me a perfect opportunity to start my techniques so again we're fighting here I'll reach him low snap this way to pull him on that foot get him coming forward and there's my perfect uh, technique if I've got a better grip alright so there's just one way you can square him up start working something okay again feeding low it's not, he's going to block this yeah, it's not easy. I might have to do this. There's another itchy. Alright, so that's rule number one. Rule number two is if he does have inside for whatever reason, that's okay to an extent, but don't let him have the sleeve. Now, watch if he pulls, pull the sleeve. Look at my body. Just pull it to your hip. To your hip. Yeah, look at my body. But watch this when I get my grip. Look at his body. The whole idea is you've got to control the sleeve. The sleeve is everything in, in judo. Sleeve, and again, there. So, if you get the sleeve, inside or outside, you know, I would rather be inside. Look at that. From here, he's very torqued and off balance. You start entering from my butchamatas and that sort of stuff. All right, the last thing I like to do against a lefty is a sumi gauge. All right, because this is his power hand. You know how in some of my videos I talk about controlling the power hand? Uh, this is his power hand if he's a lefty. So what I like to do is put two hands on him and catch it. And then I like to work a super gauge. All right, so I'm here. Oh, I used to be able to do this and do a Tani Toshi, but you're not allowed to do that anymore. So we're here, two hands on it, control it. If he pulls it away, pull it. I get my lapel and we're back to fighting for this, this grip here to get, the, to get the sleeve. If I can't get the sleeve, I'll feed even further, and now I'll pull it, and by that time I'll get this for sure. And there's my Aries and Agni to drop underneath. So there's a few strategies you can use when you're fighting a left-handed fighter. So guys, a lot of the time when you're fighting a right hander, I always talk about the need to control their right hand. So if my hand's right foot forward, he's a right hander, I'm a right hander. The first thing I always talk about is controlling their right hand. Once I can control their right hand, I can now do my judo. I can pull him forward, I can grab my grips, I can do whatever I like. It's really important. And as you start getting, you know, I don't want to talk too much about gripping because Judo competition a lot these days is so much to do with gripping, but I want to kind of get past that. But it's nice to have a strategy rather than if I step, if I just grab my hand here, he'll just do a sinagi every time, every single time. I'll do this, he'll do that every time. But if I can grab his right hand first, now when I grab this, now I do sinagi. He can't as hard harder because I've got this right hand to control. And so it's really good practice when you're fighting a righty to control that hand. But sometimes he knows the same thing because I teach him as well. So he knows that I'm right-handed. So the first thing my hand does is grab my right hand. 
This is bad for me. Because look, this hand's coming. So, put it back down. If we're fighting and he grabs his right hand, the first thing I do, I can do two things. I can do this, I could get penalized, especially if I do it two or three times. If he grabs it again, do it again, cheeto. Probably a penalty, maybe. Okay? I or if I do as I do this, he can grab his hand and do a super gauge grip. So it's two on one. He can pull it across and now he's in a super gauge position, which is not a good thing for me either. So if you're fighting someone and they're doing the right things, they grip that right hand, what's going to come next? What's stage two? He grips, and what do I say? He pulls forward, top grip or lapel. Pulls forward, and then he's got his grip. And now, I don't have a grip. I've got a bad grip behind here on the elbow, and my most powerful hand is doing nothing. And his both hands are on. He's in a good position. So when I'm fighting a righty, if he controls my right hand, the first thing I do, punch that shoulder. Uh, straight away, because the next step of his is to throw your right hand. But now I'm inside. So do that bit. I'm inside grip. He gets a grip. He can't get a top grip because my left hand's on the shoulder. Now from here, he's still got this grip. So from here, I move my hand back on top of his wrist. I then back out my body and break that grip. Now I'm in a good position. Now I can pull with his hand, get my top grip on. I can do a kawuchi, get my right hand on it, and then I change. And now I'm back into my judo. And it's a massively easy habit to get into. If you're fighting someone, they grab their hand, straight away. Now, hand on top of that hand, back out, break it. Now here's the hard part. If I let go of this, because my hand is a lightweight, he might do a scenario there. And this is the game we're getting into. That's why strategy is really important. He grabs that. I straight away post. Okay, if I don't, he's going to pull me forward, do everything. Hand on top of the wrist, I back out. And here's the heart, it's a kind of a strange position. I just push my wrist down on top of his wrist. Now I'm here. Now what I do, straight away, I throw this hand out, just in case he doesn't see Nagi. He does. So I do this. Stops him seeing Nagi, and now I do double appeal. Now I do a Nagi. He can't turn, because I've got his shoulders controlled. Now from there, I pull and get my grip, my right-handed grip, or my left-handed grip, whatever you like. So that, when you're fighting righties, this is the strategy you need to do. Obviously, I want to get on his right hand first. That's what I want to do, I want to initiate. But if he's faster than that, he gets mine, there. Throw a top grip. He can't do much. Now go around the top of the head. Look, it's so easy for me. Straight away, every time. So when you're fighting, start getting in the hat, and you'll see it, and you'll be like, oh my gosh, why didn't someone teach you this ages ago? Because it's so good. Your fighter, he grabs. My right foot stays forward as well. Don't go left, because you don't fight left. Because if you go left and I start doing this, you'll do Ashiwaza on that foot. And now I'm in problems, because I don't stand left. I stand right. He fights, grips, straight away. And you're in your, your position in judo. Give it a try, guys, at training, and honestly, you'll thank me for it, I guarantee. I always emphasize, uh, again, the inside grip. And when you have the inside grip, if it's a left and right scenario, then you can stop your opponent pulling you in. And he was saying that every time he's been having inside, but he's still been getting dominated by being, getting pulled in. So it's really subtle, but what you need to do is, if I have an inside grip at his collarbone or a little bit below, and he has a top grip, pull me in. He's going to pull me in. But I have inside grip. That's what, that's what this email is saying. How come I have inside grip and all these guys are still pulling me in? And what you need to do is, with their, if they're left and right scenario and they're really strong, you need to get this left hand up at his ear. Now pull me in. No strength whatsoever. When it's here, pull me in. It's so, I can't do anything. And from here, I can probably do a reverse Sionagi. But other than that, he's going to, and if he has this as well, sleeve, he's going to throw me for rip on. And I'm going to get really, this arm's going to get really tired from pushing. But if I have this there, pull me in. I'm using no effort. Now pull me in. I'm going to use effort. He's going to get it. Again. Yeah, I, I can give up. I can go to an extent, but then no more. So, if you want inside grip, and he's a righty and you're a lefty or vice versa, if I go here and he goes over the top, he's going to pull me in and control me really well. So, for that scenario, as he comes over, up on there. Now go, pull me in. He's got nothing. Biomechanics, I'm not any stronger. It's just this is a massive aspect 
of inside fighting or you know grip fighting. So what he might have to do is pull my arm down, pull with this hand, and now he's back to here, which means I can't stand there. Oh, that's cool. I'm safe now. He does have this hand. He does have movement. But that's how you stop someone crushing you in that's stronger than you, is getting an inside grip, but on top of the inside grip, you need to be up here at the ear. Probably put your thumb near his ear. Pull me again. Nothing. Pull me again. He's in. So give that a go at training. I guarantee it will work. It's important that uh, when you throw a top grip, that you throw it kind of like a boxer rather than like a haymaker, really. You know, in street fights, you know, brawlers throw punches like this, but a boxer is really straight to the point. You know, so when you throw on a top grip, this is a bad idea. You know, even if I'm controlling Mohan's C and Agi arm and I throw a top grip, he can do a soda because he's that good. So I don't want to be throwing like this. And it takes way longer to get there. It takes ages. What I want to be doing is pulling there. My thumb should almost scratch his ear on the way past. You know? And if I accidentally in comp hit their lip or their face, guess what's going to happen next time I go for it? They're going to move their head out of the way and they'll get a better grip. Because they're not going to block it again because they're going to get a thumb in the eye by accident. So when you throw on your top grip, either from lapel, sorry, lapel or sleeve, it's here and it honestly just clamps down. And you can practice this once again with people that don't know judo at home. You don't need a good judo partner, a black belt to do this on. Look at this arm. It's coming forward like a boxer. It's not coming over. Big difference. Look. All day. Really practice that. And then lapel's the same. Uh, sleeve's the same. Pulling. Grabbing. Not this. This is takes ages. He can block it easier. Now Mohan block his shoulder because Mohan's going to do the right thing. So go again. As I throw a top grip, on the shoulder. Again. Again. Now go. Yeah. It's a bit harder, isn't it? Over the top. Easier to block. So start thinking about that when you're training and you want that top grip. My hand doesn't come up and over. It goes straight like a punch. And in comp, if you actually hit his face or lip or nose or eye, next time he'll move his head out of the way and it makes it easier to grab. And this is also a little bit of self-control. Sometimes you get angry or you get frustrated and you want to come forward, you want to get your grip on. But you shouldn't be getting frustrated and angry in training because that's when you lose and you do stupid stuff like this and you lose. And I've done it a few times in comp. I've been thrown, I've gotten up, got a bit grumpy, thrown for a pot because I've been a little bit lazy. And that's competition for you, and that's laziness of throwing this right arm. We're going to be really straight to the point with that right hand. So now I'm just going to talk about when you when you're fighting with your opponent. A, a lot of uh, at clubs uh, around the place, you can get egos uh, with with group fighting, with strength, and things like that. Now, judo strength does help, it's very helpful, but it's still technique does prevail over, over strength, okay? So, what we're looking at doing today, I'm just going to talk about um, your movement when you're doing randori and what you're actually trying to do. So, so often in judo, um, someone will get a grip on, on me or, or on anybody, and rather than moving with that grip, I'm going to try to be the big man, I'm going to try to break it, okay? Steve might be really strong, okay? But then I'm really strong and I want to kind of make him feel like I'm better than him. So what I do is I just stand here and I just try to break it off. Whether I do it properly or wrong, but what happens is I'm trying to break that off. Okay? So Steve does that to me. He tries to break my grip off. Okay? And I just stand, and I just stand here in Randuri and I, I see this a lot uh, with people of all ages and ability levels. They'll stand there and while they're trying to break it, I just stand here going, yeah, that's it, I'm stronger than you. Suck it. Bad luck. Okay? What I should be doing is if I know that my opponent's trying to break that grip, I know he's going to. So rather than trying to be the big man and stand there and, and show him how strong I am, when he's breaking those grips, I should be trying to throw him. That's my main aim in judo is to throw my opponent. Not to see how hard I can grip him. 
So what happens is, if you do your Mandori and you come out against someone trying to break your grip, you've got two options. He can try to break it. I can stand here and hold onto it, and my forearms will start to blow, and more often than not, he'll probably break it off. Or, as he's trying to break it, yeah, I start kicking his feet, and actually start trying to throw him. I start moving, trying to do something, okay? I know he's going to try to break it. And I also know a lot of the times when people try to break it, they do use two hands. Which means this hand's free to do whatever I want. Come through for, a, for an Osotagari. I can come through for a Sodath. But I just want you to get into the habit of thinking, if he's trying to break my grip, don't just think, oh no, he's going to break my grip, he's really strong, or can he break it, I might be stronger than him. Start moving, start using your feet, start trying to throw him. Okay? Start trying to throw him. That leads on to my next point, is when we are doing judo, okay, we both have a grip, okay, when I move around, I don't just use my arms, okay? If I just move Steve with my arms, I'm, I'm going to get the gas out really quick. You know, so say we're, we're doing randori and we're fighting, you know, and I just do this a lot of the time. You know, to be honest, Steve's safe. Why? Because all he's worrying about is what my hands are doing. Okay, so if we're moving around and we're fighting and doing whatever, it's not good enough from my part and for his part. What I need to do is start making him get in two minds. The only way I'm going to throw him is if he doesn't see it coming. That's it. If Steve knows I do see an argument, he sees it coming, he's going to stop it. So what I need to do is, what I like to say to people is, lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body. That's it. So. As I, I snap with my hands, and Steve starts thinking about my hands when I'm snapping. And when he starts thinking about that, start kicking his feet. Then I move, snap, 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 kick. I'm constantly upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, until I want to attack. Okay? I don't just run around doing this the whole time, because that's not going to, he's just going to forget about it and start worrying about what, I'm, what he's doing. But if I, if I go snap, Kick, snap, kick, snap, pull, snap, kick. He doesn't know what's going on. He starts getting him in two minds. Exact same way as if we're doing randori and I do this. Kochi, ochi, kochi. Well, they're not kochi, ochi, but ochi, kochi, diash, kochi. I'm not doing anything with the hands. He's not going to, I'm not going to throw him. What I need to do, lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body. Break a grip. Kick the foot, get a grip. Snap the upper body, move him around, use my feet, getting him in positions, getting him in two minds. It's the only way you're going to throw your opponent. So, if you get a grip and they're trying to break it, don't just hang on. That's the perfect opportunity. He's thinking, all he's thinking when he's trying to break this is upper body. Start kicking his feet, start moving. Okay? Use the grip break or his hands there to your advantage. You know? Things like that. Actually use it rather than just stand there waiting for him to break it. You can even, uh, there's a Russian, uh, a Korean that actually uses the breaking, so as Steve goes to break it, as his kazushi to throw for tai toshis and things like that. But when you're moving in training, don't just think lower body and don't just think hands. Go upper body, lower body. Snap the hands, kick the feet. Snap the hands, sweep the foot. Snap the hands, move your body. Kick the foot, move the body. Snap the hands until you set up your technique. And you'll find your opponent will be on their toes the entire time.